Hi, it's Dr. Allison here again, and today I wanted to talk about um, the importance of pumping or some pumping um, basics. Um, okay, so pumping is can be important, especially if mom can't um, breastfeed directly. Let's say baby's in the NICU, um, mom has to be separated from baby for whatever reason, or if you're going back to work, or several different reasons. So if you happen to need to pump or want to pump, here is what you should know, at least a little bit. I want to try to keep this short. So with pumping, you're going to need to get a pump, obviously. And I just went to go look for mine and I realized I gave it away. <laughs> I had a manual pump and I also had a, an electric pump, a double electric pump. So I had both of those through Medela and I had one manual pump through Lansino. Um, well, I'll just have to improvise. So um, so first you're going to need to get a pump and usually you can get it free through your insurance. So if you have insurance, you should be able to get a free breast pump with each pregnancy um, and they should be able to deliver it to your house or you can go and pick it up. So and you can go and choose. Sometimes with it depends on your insurance, you can choose the one you want or they just get send out a generic one um, for whatever reason if you don't like that one then you can go and purchase one that you like or if they happen to give you like an electric one but you need a manual one for certain times then you can go out and purchase like a manual one their manuals are usually less expensive um, and you can just pick up one or two of those so you can have one for each side yeah so the first thing is getting the pump the next thing is reading the instructions. Each pump is a little bit different. They all kind of work the same. They obviously pump the breast milk, uh, but you know some knobs and some little features are different. So it's good to read the manual beforehand, just in case it's a little bit different than one you've had or one you have seen before, just so you can set it up right and um, everything's working correctly bef like before you need to pump. Uh, so you're not in the middle of pump, uh, needing to pump and like, oh man, I um, don't know how to use this. So definitely figure out how to use it before you need to pump. That's what I want to say about that. So once you figure out how to set it all up and it's time to pump, definitely have clean hands. Um, wash your hands with soap before using these uh, parts uh, so everything is clean for baby to be used, especially if you're going to uh, freeze it right after. Um, so wash your hands, plug everything in. Um, set the flanges up to either one breast if you're pumping one side at a time uh, or both uh, at a time. So place the flanges. The flanges is the big circle where you looks like you would put a breast. Put that on and you want your nipple in the middle of that flange. You don't kind of want your nipple off the side. You want it right in the middle so it can pump correctly and express the milk, draw the milk out um, efficiently so you turn it on you set it up everything's correctly on and then you turn it on and you turn it up um, turn it up so it's uh, a good speed that but it's not uncomfortable you do want it to start off a little bit faster sometimes just so it can get the sensation going get everything going and when you start to get a good letdown a good flow you can turn it down or adjust it as needed or if your flow starts to start uh, slow down a little bit you can turn it up a little bit so that's the electric one the manual one you would have it on but you're going to be pumping 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 um manually um and they even have ones that hand are hands free i've never used one myself but i hear those are awesome you know especially you know you're working and you got to just type away or do whatever you need to do as you're pumping um yeah so they have a whole bunch of different ones out there now um so you can go look up the prices and see which one is gonna that you're interested in and you can always switch it out or try a different one later on so what I want to talk about next is okay you've pumped you got the milk in the little bot storage bottles or you may have storage freezer bags that sometimes you can pump directly in them not all of storage bags milk storage bags can do that and they're not all compatible with all machines so read the storage bags before you get them if that's what you want to do but most are just compatible they have their own little um, storage bottles that are connected to the pump that you just are pumping with and once you're done you have um, 
the storage bottle and you can either cover it, put it in the fridge like that. Let's say you're at work. You can put it in a um, milk uh, cooler bag, a milk cooler bag, label it, put it in the fridge if you're at work. Definitely label it so no one takes it or thinks it's something else. Um, or if you're at home still, you know, label it so you know the time, what, how long it's been there, um, just in case you forget it's there. Um, and usually after that, at some point at the end of the day, you would put it into a freezer bag. And there are several companies that make them. My favorite is Lansano. I love those bags. Um, but you can put it in those bags and they have a place for you to mark the date, the time, how many ounces. That's important. So you want to know how many ounces is in there. So when you go to defrost it and thaw it, that you know how much you're going to be putting in a bottle for baby. Um, so last thing I want to talk about is um, what, how long can you store it in each location? Um, so if you... It's a freshly pumped milk and it's in a kind of little storage bottle and you're putting it in your little cooler bag for work um, or you're putting it in uh, the fridge. It can last in the fridge up to, just like that, up to about four or five days um, fresh like that. But then after that, you're going to need to use it or freeze it. Uh, but if you have it out and just sitting right here, it can last for about four hours, four to six hours. Some people push it, but I would say four hours. Like think of if you had milk, regular cow's milk or some drink out, you know, and it was sitting there for a couple of hours. Would you want to drink that? How long has it been sitting there? So that's something to have in your mind. Um, but it can last like four hours, which is what I have read. Four hours out on the countertop. If you had just put it down and you forgot, um, you know, mom brain. So it can last there four hours. If it's been over that, mm, sorry, you might have to toss that precious golden milk. So be aware of when you leave it out. The fridge for four to five days, but if you're going to freeze it uh, in those um, freezer bags, it's good for like six months. At our, freezer, our freezers are pretty good nowadays. They can last a long time in the freezer. If you have a deep freezer, even up to a year. So definitely label those. Um, one last thing I want to say before I go is if you are pumping exclusively, um, especially from the beginning, about everyone always asks about how many ounces, how many ounces do does a baby drink? And it depends per baby, but generally it's about 30 ounces, 25 to 35 ounces in a 24-hour period of time. So if you're pumping that much, that should be a good supply to give to baby um, per day or that should be a, like a good goal to hit about 30 ounces so if you're pumping that much you know you're kind of on the right track and then you can tailor it to how much you see that your baby is actually drinking especially if they're at a good weight they're drinking this much they're drinking 25 hours and 25 ounces then you know that's my goal 25 ounces so it's going to depend on baby as well how much they're taking in at a good weight so and how many pumping sessions should you need to get that much? Now, that's going to depend. It's going to be at least eight sessions in a 24-hour period. So eight to 12, um, especially in those, you know, when you're starting out pumping, you want to get your, you know, want to get your supply going um, because the more you pump, the more milk you're going to produce. I would say don't go over, especially within that first week of having after birth, I wouldn't go more than four hours, five hours without um, pumping or breastfeeding but we're talking about pumping i wouldn't go more than four hours without pumping uh, so your milk supply can get established that first and you can start pumping um, the day that you have your baby so the day you have your baby you can start pumping because you would start breastfeeding as well so it's safe to start pumping i would say wait about you know maybe six hours four or six hours to start pumping um if you're going to exclusively pump or you're not able to breastfeed your baby, I would say wait maybe four hours after giving birth, four or six hours to start pumping. And then you can try to get on a schedule uh, to keep that supply going. And in the beginning, it's just going to be colostrum. So you might not get 30 ounces that first day. Don't worry about that. That's like within the first week. Try to hit that goal. Um, on that first day, it might just be a couple of ounces of colostrum each pumping session. But keep going. 
keep pumping um, just to get your body in motion to get um, pumping and um, that breast milk supply started. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, kind of the basics of pumping. And yeah, so I hope this was helpful and I will see you in another video. Thank you.